All right, because I'm doing the tandem upload thing again because I'm, uh, I need to figure out how to go live on YouTube is what I need to do, but I don't know how much, I mean, they probably let people know. So anyway, I'm getting ready to go on Facebook with the e-collar recaller uh, challenge. So here we go. All right, guys, I might not be on Wi-Fi, might be the problem. Um, anyway, I'm issuing the e-collar recall challenge. And if it's anything like Ed Frawley's recall challenge, only three people will respond. Because I don't know if you remember that, Ed Frawley. That's, I hadn't spoken to Greg in years. And he posted a video where they had electronic collars around each other's necks, hitting the button, and then challenged all e-collar trainers to do this as proof it doesn't hurt as an agenda to prove to the general public this thing doesn't hurt okay well the fatal flaw hi elisa how's it going girl um i haven't seen you in forever um uh so his challenge was for all these trainers to put this thing on your neck and hit it as proof that it doesn't hurt as, as an agenda to prove, to continue to try to, you know, either dumb down the public or force their agenda. Because the problem is anybody that put it on their neck figured out in two seconds, it hurt. So my challenge is to these trainers on this e-collar advocate board who are, in my opinion, doing everything to dissuade anybody from further exploring the pager by stating it freaks them out. Do not explore that avenue any farther. Uh, that's what's really pissing me off. You know, so my challenge is to you people that are using constant stimulation and show me your recall and explain to everybody how you're getting this spectacular result. And I don't mean with a long line. When people say we have a long line, that's for pet owners. We're pros. If you think I expect to see a pro trainer in a fucking field with a long line, there is not a bird dog guy on this planet that can't take a bird dog out in a field and have it off leash and, and, and have trained it with both arms tied behind their back. So you people are in a room with a long line. So post on Greg's page, because Greg at E-Collar Technologies, Greg, get get in your get in your ta your stable there, Greg. Get in your stable of talent and produce your fastest recall and explain how they're doing it. Because if these people are pro trainers and they cannot produce a spectacular off-leash recall with an electronic collar, they suck. They suck. They suck. You know, and Jeff Gelman, I'm sure you're tired of me saying, this guy can't even do a train to retrieve. Here's a way to shut me up. Do a train to retrieve. And I'm going to tell you why you won't do that, because you can't do it with that methodology. What you people are doing is taking a knee collar and trying to shut things down. That's why you don't, any of you have a good recall. So I'm issuing this to Jeff Gelman, Sean O'Shea, who was a parking valet and went to Jeff Gelman or whatever. I can tell you, Sean O'Shea. Any serious pro trainers, they hate you. They think you're terrible. Um, Victoria Werfel, Dream Dogs, cross the board, worst work I've ever seen. Adam Spivey, my particular uh, person who has decided I'm his big enemy. Show me the recall and tell me, and I don't mean the Cliff Notes version, because I can talk shop in detail about how I'm getting these results. And if you're getting the same result as I am by a different methodology, I think it would be a good thing to explain that. Mm -hmm. Because if you said producer recall, I'd laugh and laugh. I do it every single day. So my thing to you people, what's got me really pissed off now is the fact that you are dissuading any young trainers from further exploring the pager by shutting that door, by saying it freaks them out. No, the caller's an amplifier. If the dog is freaking out with something you're doing, that's what you're doing. You're freaking them out. It's an amplifier. You're not freaking them out as bad when you don't have the collar on. But you don't see that, you know. And these people haven't had any formal training. They're on the internet bullshitting all of you. 
that kid Blake in New York, you know, you might have a shot, Blake, but you're in a room with a pinch collar and, a, and an e-collar following, you know, Jeff Gelman. He can't even do a train to retreat. And, and please feel free to come back at me, Jeff Gelman, because I'll sick Mark Patton on you. Don't kid yourself that that's my guard dog and my pit bull that will chew your ass up in a New York minute. I'll tell him to call you on the phone. So don't come at me. You are damaging. You're not advocating for this collar at all. You're damaging the career of every single young dog trainer that picks up a collar that has a pager feature on it. It is the rare electronic collar that doesn't bear a pager. Collar Clinic claims that's the most requested feature. But you people are shutting the door. 50 people who never comment on anything come out of the woodwork on the e-collar advocate board to say don't use the pager. So I'm faking all this? I'm faking all this. I can tell you step by step by step. If you want to send me a recall video, I'm pretty sure I can tell you how to improve it. Because I've made all the mistakes I've learned. I've learned how to get that thing chugging at you at top speed. So I can explain technically how to do that. So, hey, girl. Um, so I'm putting this challenge. And I'm telling you, if it's anything like Ed Frawley's challenge. And Ed, if you want to post a video of a recall, you know, and here's, here's the only thing I'm saying. Tell me he's a long line or a prong collar. If you're an e-collar trainer and you're not, you know, and you're saying that the pager freaks them out and that what you're doing has more technical merit than post the video because Greg at e-collar technologies, if you're a young dog trainer, that is across the board, the worst work you're going to see. Larry Crone, let me see your video, Larry Crone, and let me see one where the dog isn't shaking its head. Because do you know what that is, Larry? When a dog is shaking its head when you're hitting it with the stimulus, that's something called the shake-off. It's something that dogs do called the shake-off. And I've got video after video after video of it. And they do it after a conflict. They do it after a conflict with a perceived adversary or a perceived adversarial move, maybe not necessarily. And if you said, how many videos did you have to watch before you figured out the shake-off? Honestly, I think about 12,000. I think it took me 12,000 videos to figure out what that was. So I've seen it enough times, you know, every time they got in a fight. And now if you see somebody with a dog, if, if somebody with an e-collar has a dog that's shaking its head, that's an extension of the shake-off. And, you know, dogs do it as a social releaser after conflict. That's what they do. Hi, Thomas. How's Tucker? Um, so my thing is to all you trainers on the e-collar advocate board, you know, there's got to be people on here because I see that 25 of my friends like Jeff Gelman. I don't know who these people are. You're, this guy is holding you back. You don't want to spend your career. I am got. I'm making a big push to help teach every single companion dog out there how to do a trained retrieve. You guys need to be able to do this. This is your career. This is your career, and you're going to try to say that these people using constant stimulation have more animated dogs than me. It's ridiculous. I'm not sure what your agenda is, other than you don't know any better. So Victoria Warfel, Jeff Gelman, Sean O'Shea, Nick at Unleash Canine, across the board, second to Victoria Warfel, the worst work I've ever seen. You tell handlers to act erratically and throw stuff around. Oh, that doesn't affect your relationship. Kick stuff, throw stuff. If you are doing dog training and you're throwing food on the ground and correcting the dog for getting it, that's not good. If you're making a dog stay and throwing tennis balls around it, that's not good. That's your friend. This is how you treat your friends, you know? And if you said, how many videos did it take you to figure all this crap out? Like 16,000. Because as of last week, I had 16,000. So I'm tired of these people on this advocate, damaging the careers, not telling these people, don't pet the dog, you know, use constant stimulation. I'm going to call. Where's my goddamn phone? I'll call, except for they're not open yet. I'll call Regina at Dobbs and say, would you please ask Jim and Phyllis if they've ever heard of some idiot named Jeff Gelman that's claiming to teach their method to everybody on the planet? They're going to say no. 
So you people shut me up by producing your fast recalls. We'll get somebody to run it through a computer program. We'll get somebody to run, develop a computer program. Well, I will. I will. Mike knows I will. And we will run it through there, and we will say the time from the time this person calls the dog until it gets there is twice as fast as hers. Then I'll shut up. And Dave Cochran at Show Me Your Dog Training, uh, and Ty Brown, both of you, both of you, show me, show me, Dave. You wanted to rip me apart and run to the little uh, fake review page, uh, tattling on me to uh, uh, Lori uh, Tower. I want to see your video uh, too, Lori. Uh, you, you both went running onto the board claiming I was attacking you. No, I was informing you that your training is not good. And the reason you even met me, Lori, was because you were going to the UK and they didn't want pinch collars. And so suddenly when I don't like pinch collars, you come raging onto my page saying, trying to bring your little chihuahua on there to snap at my heels, saying it's a good tool to have in the toolbox, oh, please. Yeah, that's like telling, you know, that's like telling Todd Andrew, the commercial contractor, that a handsaw is a good tool to have in your toolbox. I call Todd Andrew right now. He doesn't have a handsaw in his toolbox. So stop it. You know, if you guys, you all need to start learning how to do trying to retrieves. Hi, Tisa. Uh, tell Lance I said hello. Um, Lance is uh, my friend. He's a, a dog handler in the Army. He's a real soldier. He's been on the front lines a lot. And Lance loves my training. I'll sick Lance on you. Uh, Tisa, tell Lance I may have to sick him on some of these online bullies. <laughs> He'll get him. He'll get him. Anyway, guys, that's my challenge. To everybody I named on there, shut me up. Post a fast recall video outside without a long line in a field. And if you said, well, you do it, I, I do it live. I do it live. I'll use, my, I'll use my video with Buddy, the chocolate lab from yesterday or the day before. That's what I'll use as my entrance. So post it on Greg's page. And somebody will let me know what's there because I can't go on Greg's page. It's so terrible that it starts actually, hi, Mike. Uh, it actually starts, up. there's no speed. And so I'm going to break it down for you. If you guys said, then tell me the tech uh, aspects of your recall. Here they are. We get a dog that's in free agency in motion. We use the pager to cue the dog in a, in a heightened reality sense. We wait until the dog is moving away quickly. We use the pager as a cue in conjunction with a verbal and then add motion the other direction, get them running your way. If you can get a dog to do something one time, if you're any good, any trainer will tell you this. If you can get him to do it one time, you can get him to do it twice, thrice, five, six, eight times. If they've done it every day, you're not correcting them. You're, you're not correcting them. So it is not about corrections. It's getting behind the wheel. If you're saying, wait, sit, stop, don't eat your food, don't do this. You're like a driver that gets in a car and keeps slamming on the brake. You've got to get that thing where you can turn it every which way but loose. So if you said you have a dog, you can turn every which way. But absolutely. Nachos, bumpers, maverick, dog after dog after dog. I can micro move them. If you said these people can take constant and micro move them, I'd say, they, no, they can't. They don't have the skill. Very few people do. Very few people do. And if you said, who does Mike Lardy, Andy Attar, Dave Roram, Roy Gunya, on and on and on and on and on, those guys behind the wheel of a very, very fast car, those guys can do it. They can accelerate and they can break those things with constant. Boom, 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 boom. You guys can't do that. You're trying to do it. You're trying to bend them and push them and all these things, but you don't really even know the tech of how to do that. So that's why it's not working. So I'm, I'm going to go on the record of saying, if you've got a long line on in a room, you're no good. If you're a pro, long lines. Okay. Maybe the first there. And if you said, well, I've seen videos with you. Yes, Brinkley, that golden retriever. When I first took him out to the park, I did have him drag in a leash. And if you said, what was your intention? To grab it and pull him to, no, to help him understand I'm crippling you. I'm doing it as a function of crippling you. That's what I'm doing. I'm not putting it on there to pull you or do anything. Because I, can, I know I can control you. I've got contingency plans to control you with motion. 
you know, and if you said, well, all the stimmer trainers are have contingent are controlling, they don't even know about this concept. If you said stimmer trainers are constantly making the statement, harness the dog's existing momentum and use it to bullshit. They're saying, shut it down, stop, wait, sit, look at it, just sit there. They don't know anything about harnessing the momentum. They don't know anything about free agency. They all, if you're throwing up your arms and saying, okay, oh, you're a terrible trainer. I'm not the only one that will tell you that, that you don't know that. You've got to say to yourself, maybe I haven't had as much formal training as I thought. Because there should not be a huge demarcation <laughs> line. If you said your dogs look like they're operating a free agency, I would say yes. And if you said, how long did it take you to figure out that? Uh, 23 years. <laughs> you know, 23 years. I think because I only figured that out maybe two years ago. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I could look back, but, you know, that's what you guys have to think of. If, you know, it's, it, people wonder, why do all these dogs look at you all the time? What are the treats? If we just get those treats, they'll do it, and they won't. Because you're all the little things you're doing, they're so aware of micro movements that if we're not doing the little micro movements that they're aware of, they're aware we're not aware of them. So, you know, that's what the deal is. I'm challenging all these stimmer trainers. If you are, you know, helping these people start a career in dog training by telling them, do not any further explore the pager. This is in behaviorist vernacular, freaks them out. Okay, that's handler error and method failure. That's what that is, douchebag. It's handler error and method failure. You know, Sean O'Shea, that fucking video. That's a video called How to Make a Dog Act Like a Statue. That's the worst thing I've ever seen. I'll post that on the thing. Here's the recall. Every single... I want you guys to even go and find a video where these dogs don't have their back to these people. Sean O'Shea's DVD, somebody sent me that last year. Every single dog has, when, when a dog is going to its place and has its back to you, you've got to say to yourself, that maybe the dog doesn't like me. Because I'll tell you what I do. I don't look at people I don't like. So get your recalls. Just run out there. If you guys are all serious pros that are selling this stuff and launching the careers of young trainers, by telling them constant stimulation and that in, you know, ever how many years we've been using an e-collar. If you said the, the uh, difficulty of field trials has not increased in the last 20 years, I'd say, yes, it has. It had to because everybody was so good that they would have open competitions and open people don't waste their money to go to the open unless they're a serious pro and they got serious clients and serious trucks full of dogs where 100 dogs would show up to compete in an open. So they had to make it so hard because they said to themselves, we got to get rid of about 50 of these sons of guns real quick. We don't have the resources, you know, to keep running a 100 dog trial where every single dog can pass every single test. So we're going to make it hard as hell. We'll get rid of 50 of them right off the bat. You know, so they've, they've totally evolved. And if e-collar training, you know, has not evolved to the point where we're not, we don't have a pinch collar and a long line on too, then we're not doing very good. If you said, oh, well, you mean you can just go take a dog out in the field and make it run easier? Yeah, I can. Yes, I can. You know, so please, you people that are the friends with these people that truly like them, please run and tell them about this before you unfriend me because I've realized that some people are just hopeless. They're going to believe this guy yesterday, this Tom, I went on and saw his work. It was first e-collar session. The dog had on a great big collar, a pinch collar, and an e-collar and looked shut down. And I said, okay, I, uh, because he had a video where the dog was dragging the leash. And I said, it's a momentum killer. You can see the dog, it's, even if it's only a slight momentum killer, we, we really don't want that. We want the dog driving forward. You don't have something, if there's something dragging out of your car, somebody stops you and tells you. So, you know, his solution was, there's a leash law. Rules must be followed. Okay. I, I First I unfriended him and then I blocked him because I said, people like this are not outside the box thinkers. You know, you've got to be a rule breaker. Do you, what if I said, don't use the pager and uh, don't hook the leash to the e-collar? You know, I wouldn't have any of this work. So, you know, if any of you can't find anything in this work, 
you know, and you've got faster, better recalls using constant stimulation, and you can technically tell me and the whole world and every young and up and coming dog trainer that you're trying to uh, funnel into your little uh, meat grinder machine, you don't even know how to do trained retrieves. I also would challenge any of you, if you've been training dogs for 20 years and you can't do a train to retrieve, what have you been doing? You know, you certainly haven't, you know, we're past the point of being, getting them to sit with the prong collar. If you're training dogs for companion dogs, you need to be able to, you know, crap. Oh, that's my new trainee. And I'm going to tell you, Nina, if you're watching this, uh, this poor girl went to Aaron Tucker with a four and a half old, uh, uh, four and a half month old puppy. This guy gets the one sport dog that doesn't have the pager on it. And at the end tells the woman, it's the most stubborn dog I've ever seen. Okay. If a four and a half month old lab is the most stubborn dog you've ever seen, then you're, you're, haven't been doing this very long, you know? So anyway, guys, that was my rant and everybody that supports me. I love all of you guys. And, you know, I, it means a lot to me. It really does. It means a lot to me because I do, you know, I've spent my life here doing this work and maybe I should have made more attention to the internet and I'm going to work on that. And, you know, the fact that I don't do good on chat boards, you know, it's just me, uh, you know, but at least I focus on my work. <laughs> so uh, uh, that's what I want all of you guys to think of. You're, you know, the dog, if it was you, if it was me, and it, somebody said, come on, let's go here, let's do this, let's do that. I would think to myself, they're fun. Let's go eat, let's do this, let's do, that's what I do with my friends. Let's go do this, let's go, do, not stop, wait, sit, pulling on me at all. Here's an idea, don't touch me. You know, any dog can be controlled with motion any dog you need I, I don't even think you should give commands i look back at my old videos and i'm like who am i talking to they're not, they're listening to my body language so i don't say anything anymore so i'm going out there to make a video for one of my fans who um wants to know about muzzling the dog because i and he's i'm not sure where you're at. i honestly don't even know where this country is but um you know he thumbs up all my videos and i don't forget that i don't forget that you know, so I am not an expert, but I'm just going to tell you, in theory, I can pretty much, in theory, I can pretty much understand how to do most things with dogs is, you know, and that's what I think people, that's where I think a lot of people go wrong. You need to go to field trials or you need to study American field trial trainers. You need to study hunt tra test trainers. You need to study Schutzen trainers, or I know they don't call it Schutzen anymore, but you need to study ring sport trainers because they're the epitome they're the epitome of motion. You know, they're, they're, that's why those people don't have any kind of shutdown method and don't understand a shutdown method because they're everything that, you know, their activities require motion. So they're the epitome and the dog is the epitome of, you know, a fast car goes and goes and goes and that you can get them to do all kinds of things. The second you shut one down, you're never going to get a train to retrieve. That's the problem. You should approach anything. And if you said you're limited, I, I did a train to retrieve on a deaf boxer. I don't even think those things do trying to retrieves. So, you know, I want all of you to say by next year, this time, I want to be doing trained retrieves. I want to be shutting this woman up with my blazing fast recalls and, uh, you know, realizing that all of these people on the advocate chat board were wrong. There is such a thing as that. You guys, there's such a thing as different ways to use the e-collar and there's such a thing as doing it completely wrong. You know, because if you set, where's the books? The reason these people don't have anything in writing is because you can't write it down. There's, there's no specs. There's no specs. There's no tech to write down. If you're doing technical, you won't find a technical trainer on the planet who will not agree with me that technical e-collar training has very technical aspects. So if you cannot list these technical aspects, then don't do it. That Dave Cochran said, you know, his challenge to me was, well, I'm an obedience trainer, not a knee collar trainer. Well, that's what I do. I'm not, you know, I don't know who I am anymore, you guys. Honestly, I don't know who I am. I'm somebody trying so hard to do right by dogs. And if you're saying your results aren't reflecting that, well, stop it. You know, and that these people with the e collar work they're doing with their pinch collars and their long lines and their constant is putting you to shame. And 
you know, it's embarrassing for you and that's why you're making this ridiculous video. Then I'd say, oh, maybe I'm crazy. But I'm not. I mean, you know, they're doing it wrong. They're abusing dogs. And that's, it's, it's abuse when you know there's an alternative and you choose not to use it. So anyway, guys, I'm going to go out there and do the how to, how to, um, get work with a muzzle because I tell you as a culture, they seem to do it in Britain a lot. And you guys are from Britain. Tell me, are you, is it true? They do it a lot there. They seem to do it as just as a sort of a passive, just inability to solve behavior problems. They just muzzle them or it's smart. It's smarter than what we do. So I'm going to go out there and show you how I have done it in the past in the cases where I did have to use a muzzle. So anyway, you guys, that's it. And stay tuned. I've got a bunch of trained retrieves coming up and I'm trying to work on some new stuff. And I just, you know, I want to inspire you guys. I want you to all say to yourself, you know, Wherever you are, you know, especially in the UK and in Europe, the e-collar is in its infancy there. Because if you said, oh, our top uh, e-collar guy puts your Mike Lardy to shame, you don't even know who Mike Lardy is to have a guy to put our guy to shame. So, you know, and it's not your fault. It's not your fault that you're looking to the wrong people. I can tell you, you're looking to the wrong people. If you watch these people's work, I want you to watch these people's work with no sound and ask yourself, how much of the time is the dog not looking at them, you know? And then that needs to be your litmus test. That's the litmus test, you know, that we've got to say to ourselves, if they're not engaged, they're probably not learning anything. You know, they're not learning. If they've got their back to you, I'll tell you what you're teaching them to turn their back to you. It's literal and figurative. So if the dog has its back to you, you've got to take about three steps back and say, what am I, what did I do wrong to get it not looking at me? And I did not do that. So anyway, guys, that's the e-collar challenge. I will expect Greg's page to just be flooded. And I have got a secret panel of judges and they're Europeans, competitive European dog trainers, competitive trainers, competitive trainers. I don't speak that good of English. I've uh, purposely picked people that don't speak that good of English because they'll only be reading the dog's body language, you know, and going by that. So, uh, and they're my friends. I'm not going to say who they are, but uh, I'm going to run all the videos by them. And so put your tech specs in something that I can interpret for these people in like three different languages. So anyway, bye guys.